like it's a cliche yeah. when Tom Papa comes into town. I was thinking, well, maybe I'll play Papa Don't Preach. Uh-huh. And then I go, eh, that's kind of lame, too. I just, ha- <laughs> I just love Come to Papa by Bob Seger. So any chance I get to play that song... But he didn't. You play it on the out because yeah. that is not cliche. That's a great tune. Great song. Yeah. yeah. And I, you know, my first failed television project was called Come to Papa. <laughs> and my first, first failed, failed television. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, and I could not let the name go. So I made a podcast out of it. Yeah. I come up on stage. You know, I do uh, Biggie Smalls too. Okay. Big Papa. Big oh, yeah, Papa. Yeah. That's, yeah. A, good, that's yeah. a good one. If uh, I want the kids to think I'm cool. Sure. Put on a little biggie. Get down with the kids. <laughs> yeah. Do you do blackface when you do it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it depends where what part of the country I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you hear these people go, oh, the kids in their saggy pants, or the kids in their this and their that. I'm like, the adults with the blackface. <laughs> I know. <laughs> what is going on? I know. They just can't, uh, they, they, they're just not clued in. I had a really funny run right before Halloween with my daughters. They're 17 and 14. Very woke. And uh, I, I was just like, okay, so wait a minute. Are you saying I can't wear a sombrero? Because I'm thinking <laughs> maybe a sombrero would be... Dad, no! All right, well, how about if I dress up like an Arabian Knight? Is yeah. that, That's cool, because I really love them. And No, they were just tearing their hair out. <laughs> and I was really trying to like lean into... Uh, I could just be super inappropriate. Then I caught my daughter. Uh, with a like mud mask on, uh huh, like a little oh, and an exfoliating. Was, it looked mask, like yeah. blackface. <laughs> so now I keep bringing it up on my phone. I'm like, don't tell me who's woke. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You don't want me to send this yeah. to all your friends, do you? <laughs> yeah. I'll make you go viral in the worst right. way. Right, yeah. one post and you're done. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, Tom Papa is back in town to do hilarities this weekend. Uh, the shows tonight. Uh, let me see here. What time are they over there? 7 to 7 9.30. 7 to 9.30 tonight. And tomorrow. Tomorrow's sold out. I think the early one's sold out. The second one has a little left. Okay. But uh, People love going out on Saturdays. They love Saturdays. And yeah, uh, yeah and and there's a lot of people coming out. We don't yeah. have that much left. But uh, yeah, it should be great. Um, you're doing 30. your own radio thing on the regular now. You do I a am. show with Fortune Feimster. I respect you guys even more now. On satellite radio. Yeah. yeah, but you weren't completely. I mean, it is different doing it every day. You do it every day? Is it five days a week or Monday, three? Monday, uh, four days a week. Four days a week. That's still a lot of radio. It's a lot of radio, but yeah. it's short. I mean, we only do two hours a day. Mm-hmm. Um, um, but it's early. Two nothing. hours. Two wow. hours. Know, what right? do you do? Four and a half. Four and a half every day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, look, it's I've always respected what radio performers do yeah. my whole career. Because, you know, as a young comic, you run into a lot of it. Of course. And you get to see and you know how tough it and you knew, And you can see the differences. Great shows. Yeah. Really good, <laughs> lame shows. <laughs> yeah. But, man, I, it's it, my respect is just elevated. Having to roll in every day and look and having two hours facing you. 7 to 9 a.m. 7 to 9 a.m. Yeah. And, uh, and, it, and then it repeats later in the day. It's on Sirius XM's uh, Netflix is a Joke Radio. Yep. Channel 93. And it's good. I really enjoy it. I love Fortune Feimster. She's just a good friend She's of mine. And yeah. How did we this, just have a great... Is that what it was? Was it was it the two of you that... I didn't know if the two of you had been teamed up or no, they how, came what the genesis to, of that was. They came to me and asked if I would host the show. And I said, yeah, I think it sounds great. And they said, who would, who would you bring on? And... Uh, you know, they were hoping it would be a little diverse or possibly a woman or, you know, something different from what I am. Mm-hmm. And uh, and they just threw some names at me and I, her name was in the mix. And I was like, oh, done. Because I ran into her. We weren't really that tight, but we would see each other at shows. I, we had a couple of you just flow, vibed, yeah. Totally vibed. Yeah. We really loved just, we could riff. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, there's a no brain. She just makes me laugh. Mm-hmm. She's just so fun to be in the room with. Oh, she's got a ton of energy. She's great. I love her. She's great. So it works. Like that part of it just clicks. We could just, we could talk endlessly. Yeah. You know, which is just a huge thing. So are you still doing Come to Papa or no? Because they were airing that for a while over there too. Yeah, they're still doing Come to Papa on Comedy yeah. Greats on Sirius XM. But that's okay. only, that's once a month. Yeah. That's a live show. That's like a, you know, a classic radio variety show. I have comedians come on, and then I have uh, uh, sketches and music, and and that rolls as my podcast too. That, that 
I do a podcast every week. Just come to Pop yeah, Podcast, yeah. and th- I'll take those shows, the live ones, and put them into there. So if you don't have Sirius, you can still listen. And you're to still it. doing the NPR thing too. I'm doing live from here, yeah. But Prairie live Home Companion here. is that still a thing? Or Prairie Home Companion is live from here. Oh, oh I see. Yeah. After the whole Garrison Keeler, they rebranded it. And, totally. Okay, yeah. And then uh, and now it's live from here, and that's just in New York now. It used to tour around. Yeah. But now it's uh, a town hall in New York every time. And it's great. It's kind of like Wait Wait does in Chicago. But so right, you don't exactly. do road shows, exactly. or, you, or you do? Um, uh, for 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 live from here. No, they're do. not on the road okay, anymore. Okay, so just just in a, New York, just yeah. in New York, and uh, and I come in. It's light. Like I come in. I do my monologue out in America every time I'm there. Yep. And so out of four, I'll go like two. You know, I, yeah. I'm not there every week. I'm out touring and. I like seeing. Thing. I really do like seeing some comics who I think are just. On their own, really funny, really inventive guys like you. I like seeing Gaffigan do those CBS morning things. Yeah, you know, yeah, I think, yeah. I just I like to see those kind of branched out things. You know. Yeah. You, you're you're doing so many things now. You yeah. still doing the bread show? The bread show. I'm not sure if we're making any more. Oh, I thought it was dead, but then they just started running them on the cooking channel. Yeah. So I'm I'm wondering if they're gonna make some. You're saying more. it might rise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if there's dough involved, <laughs> I'll take the call. If they come across yeah. with enough dough, this guy's got some real crust on him. <laughs> yeah. Gonna air some repeats of that thing. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, for years, like, you know, as like a young comic, you like, you know that you have a, a, the capability to, or the, at least the opportunity now to make stuff. Like yes. You can, the me, the, the, it's not that like, people don't have to say yes for you to make things. Mm-hmm. Like, you have that ability. But it did really take a long time before I was solidly knew what I wanted to make. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, you got to throw a lot of bread against the wall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you're just kind of like, you're just funny, and you that's kind of it. But now at this point, you know, I just handed in my second book. Mm-hmm. I like, I know what I want to say on stage. I know what I want to say off stage. It The bread thing kind of crept in, the radio thing. Like, it's all kind of, it all just fits. And it all, you know what I, I mean, mean it's it, and it all informs... The stand up and everything else. It's, yeah, yeah. It, it seemed, but it took a long time. Like right. it took a long time to settle into no, this is what I'm about. Better late than never. Thing. Yeah, no, I yeah. think you know, I was always doing stuff a- along the way, but it just feels like I'm enjoying it more now than ever. I, you're a consummate professional stand up. No, obviously, no one's gonna gonna deny that. Uh-huh. Does doing all these other things did that make you mo- even more confident as a stand up in some way? Yeah, it's interesting you say that because I just shot a my new Netflix special last week, mm-hmm. and it was like I I was standing backstage and I was like I was more confident, like I'd done this before. Yeah, you know my last one I did here in Cleveland mm-hmm. at, at the Hannah, and uh, I was backstage and it, and it, it just I had a moment where I was like I guess I am more confident now yeah, like, right. you know what I mean like, you've been there before and I'm you, not you sweating that, yeah. I used to worry about when I would shoot a special how much I was going to sweat yeah. because I would have like you know a towel like on the stool just in case I was like I don't really sweat that much anymore right. and yeah. why is that it's not like I'm in better shape than when I was 35 I'm you just you do look a little bit more jacked uh, you do I? You, well yeah are you doing anything or no you look a little I, more I'm just eating less I'm just eating. And, oh, and I'm the I'm on the Peloton bike. Ah, oh, the Peloton. Ah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you sweat your balls off on that thing. Do you really? Yeah. Do. That's where you, you want to sweat. Yeah. You really yep. do. Lock your shoes in and go to town. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no. It was funny. I called the hotel when I was here. This I get. You could tell like I'm getting hooked on it. Mm-hmm. And I because some hotels have them. Yeah. And uh, you bring your shoes along if you want and do it. And I called the hotel and I'm like. Got the guy, the poor guy on the phone. I'm like, you have a fitness center? They're like, yeah, we do. I'm like, do you have the Peloton bike? The who, the what? (laughs) (laughs) The Peloton bike? We got bikes, if that's Uh, what you're trying to say. (laughs) You might see a Pelican, sir. You might see one on the lake. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. But, you know, and you're friends with Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah. And I've always been um, intimidated by him and uh, kind of a a, a, a philosophical acolyte of, of what he does. And he's so... You kind of, I wonder how much you've gotten from him and kind of that confidence thing, not from him directly, but he's, Mm -hmm. no one will ever, you know, Jerry Seinfeld could criticize you up and down and nobody would ever go, well, what does he know? Right. He was just here and I saw him and he's lost it. It's unimpeachable. You know what I mean? (laughs) Just, yeah. He was all over the place. Yeah. He's just using a lot of words that didn't need to be there. Just just rambling. But he's always been like that Zen kind of guy. And I wonder if over time, 
you arrived at that point where you're like, yeah, now I kind of see. Yeah, but I but I would say it's a very practical thing. It it is a, the result is probably a Zen kind of a feeling, yeah. but the practical way that you get there, which I learned from him, is really working hard and being uber prepared. Yeah, he doesn't le- like that. If you work super hard and w- really not not lying to yourself amount of how much you're writing and performing and working and doing stuff. Like if you show up and you're really, really, it's like being a kid going to take a test. And it's like those moments where you would dial in and like really study, you'd walk in there, no sweat. And that's the same thing with, uh, with stand up. I learned from him that if you really, really, really put in the work, one of the greatest things he ever said to me, which I remember every time I taped something was you did all all the work's done. Yeah. You did all the work. that You hit the ball over the fence. Now you're just rounding the bases. Yep. If, as long as you get that mic out clean, you're gold. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that all comes from preparation, which for me, I'm a little more emotional and stuff. So I would kind of like drift and be like, why aren't I confident? Or how am I? And how do you get that? And it was kind of a drift that way. And for him to dial it in for me by example that... No, just do the work. There telling, are, there telling, are practical steps yeah. to do. This isn't. We're not dealing with witchcraft. He's like a scientist. Yes, in that way. Exactly. It's I just a, remember him mm. years, years ago doing some rinky-dink interview with somebody. It was like the show had been on for maybe a year, mm-hmm. and he was like, you know, talking about writing every day and all that. Mm-hmm. And he was like, um, it's. He was describing his first time on Carson, and he mm-hmm. goes, "I did that five minutes so many times." He goes. Somebody could have been slapping me, and it wouldn't have thrown me off. It yeah. was like, I knew it down to a millisecond. Yeah. And once you get out there and you got it in there, you just do it. And what's amazing, too, at this stage is that he's still learning it himself. He's still, you you can't, you never, like, cross the finish line, and now I'm good, I'm confident. Right. He I'm never cool. ma- made it. He's, yeah. you know, he's... 20 years ahead of me yeah. and literally he was taping a special the same week I was and we were sharing information we were texting back and forth the whole time and all the stuff like reminding yourself of what to do and reminding yourself and being trying to like realize like oh wait you still have obstacles like you still get thrown you still have I messed up a word why mm-hmm. is that I'm, I still mentally have to get in this right space and we're constantly sharing things about writing that we learn from other people, like a YouTube video or a quote from someone about dedicating your life to writing. And because the audience is a whole another organism, anything can happen out there. Anything, yeah. anything. And but my point is that he is like there's no like, which is kind of great to know in anything. There's no real, you don't. There's no mastery of it. Right. Even the guy as great as him, as accomplished mm-hmm. as him flying in on his jet, doing the shows in Cleveland, (laughs) flying home before the audience has even driven home to the suburbs. (laughs) That guy is still has to have conversations with other comics and discuss, like, you ever do a joke like this and then it doesn't work? It doesn't work or it works this time, but then it doesn't work this time. Yeah. You can't can't find the consistency in it or you you gotta switch it around. Yeah, all that stuff. All that stuff, constantly learning, constantly, Mm -hmm. and it's not boring because you're constantly having to re-educate yourself. That's the fun of it. And that is the fun of it. And I think that's a, a, a real lesson for life. Like, What's well, like the reason people like golf because they they're like, oh, it's perfect, easy to learn, but it's hard to perfect kind it, of thing. Exactly, and, and that's how I think a lot of art forms are, especially comedy, because you can get that moment where you say it just right that one time, and then you think you got it. Yeah, and you run, like all right, now I got this one dialed in. You yep. go out there, and you do it again, and they're like, no, it does nothing. <laughs> no, you stupid. You yeah. thought you were good, but you're not. Yeah, <laughs> golf is a great analogy. Yeah, it's they're they're complex things, and mm-hmm. we're and we're complex. You're mm-hmm. different every day. You're different minute to minute, yeah. right? You ever you like, see me yesterday? I was very different. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Uh, I went to see Tool on oh, you did? Wednesday, and then stayed a little out a little too late and drank a little too much, uh-huh. and was uh, did half the show yesterday from the floor. No, yeah. Yeah. I, was that. I was in here though. Yeah, I was, was Tool. Here. I heard. I heard they're the, incredible. That's what I heard. Yeah, they're great. They, my friend saw him in Denver. Uh, hold that thought. i got to give away some money here. Uh, Tom Pop is at Hilarities, by the way. You go to pickwickandfrolic.com for the info. 7 and 9.30 tonight. 7 o'clock tomorrow is sold out. Still some for the 9.30 tomorrow night, but you can get the info online there. 
Uh, okay, a thousand dollars here very quickly. What? Chance for you to go fund yourself. Good luck. Hey, it's Rover. Go fund yourself. We have your shot at one thousand dollars now. Text the nationwide keyword "pan" to the number two hundred two hundred. You'll get a text confirming entry plus iHeartRadio info, standard data, and message rate supply in this nationwide contest. That's "pan" to two hundred two hundred. Good luck and go fund yourself from one hundred point seven WMMS. We get pan a lot. That's yeah. real money. Pan them. That's oh, yeah. real money. A thousand dollars. You do giveaways like that on your radio show? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we give away ju- a pack of juicy fruit gum. <laughs> yeah. That's how you know you're in the early days of a radio show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, I got a couple of DVDs for you. Yeah, you know it's funny too. Like we don't have any of the stuff that like a real radio show has. Like nobody brings us food. Nobody like gives us giveaways. Nobody gives like there's we're begging on. You're stuff. the underdog. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty funny um i was uh, ch- clicking around the other night and the informant was on oh yeah and i forget that you're in that yeah yeah and i go man this is a good movie this isn't great i like seeing you in stuff yeah oh, thanks yeah i appreciate that i love that i love hearing that yeah. i love knowing that i'm in a movie yeah <laughs> you're like really oh yeah fun, i forgot yeah. i was in that especially a good one like that's a really good movie soderberg and oh, Damon. yeah man it's so good have you been cut out of big films though have you have you done no you i never up on the no i never no. got cut out I never got. I I just don't get parts sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> but, but I've I've never been cut out of. Do you still go out stuff. for stuff or no? Did a they come little, to you? A little bit. Yeah, I just did. Um, I just did two little independent films, mm-hmm. which uh, which was really cool to do. Like one was up in Syracuse, and one was um in L.A. And that was cool because they did just come to me. And yeah, wanted me to do it, and I was like, it's just such like to have be around people that are cool and like creative yeah. and that they dug my comedy enough to come ask me just to do it like that feels really good i don't like auditioning at is it all. dramatic stuff i always i always like seeing comics in dramatic roles because yeah obviously it's against type but i mean if they're if they nail it it's just really fun to watch they kind of they both were actually yeah. like they had a little sense of humor to them but it was pretty straight roles you know, and I had uh, Gaffigan on a couple of weeks ago, and he had this movie coming out where he yeah. like kidnaps a gang member's kid. <laughs> yeah. I know. I was like, bro, you are swinging <laughs> for the fences here. I know. Yeah, I saw that. He did a great job. Yeah. And uh, yeah, which I really Can like. Be- yeah, <laughs> yeah, because I really like that because you know if you know Jim really well, you know he he has a little temper. He yes. can be a little mean. He's got nineteen <laughs> kids. Right? Yeah, yeah, you know, not. he's yeah. seething underneath. Yeah. yeah, and then I was in uh, Rob Zombie's new movie for about 20 seconds right you and rob go way back. yeah yeah we just did uh thir- three from hell that yeah, just came out. yeah yeah and um originally i had a bigger part where i was supposed to be a prison guard during a prison break <laughs> yeah and uh and i wanted to die i wanted that was the thing i really wanted him to a bloody kill me on death. stage yeah, yeah on film rather and he I said so do i live and he said, "If you can live, w- if you can survive without a face, <laughs> I was like, oh, this is gonna be the coolest ever.' But then they cut the scene, so he put me in as a newscaster. Yeah, and it's horrible. Oh, you didn't even shoot the scene. No, no that scene. Oh, I, no. Thought, I, I thought I didn't know if you meant it. Got no, cut before, from the, yeah. no, before. It would have been cool to go through all that. Ah, oh, it would have been yeah. great. And uh, so I went in and just did this like newscaster thing in the seventies. Yeah. And he, Rob came into the makeup thing. He's like, "No, he needs a bigger mustache than that." <laughs> <laughs> it comes on now. You won't even recognize me. I, yeah. I look completely bald, which I don't have a lot of hair, but I look like really bald and have this walrus. I look like a walrus. Yeah. I look like a fat walrus. <laughs> For, to the point where my wife was like, I thought you were in this. I'm like, that was, <laughs> Honey, that's that me right that there. That was yeah. you? I'm not yeah. married to that. <laughs> right. So with all the stuff you do now, I mean, you have your girls are teenagers. Yes, sir. Is it less of a thing that you're gone a lot? I mean, are you, overall, I guess, even with all the things you're doing, are you gone the same amount or are you gone more? Um, I'm gone... You know, when I was doing the bake show, I, the bake show and the book tour, like all this stuff, kind of hit last year where I was yeah. gone a lot, and now I'm just gone like stand up gone, which yeah, yeah. isn't too bad. But Thursday you know what? Monday, it's maybe. actually harder now. Is it because they're mm-hmm. older and they're more like into their own thing? And they're 17 and 14. It's yeah. like you know more important stuff's going on, and I want and my 17 year old. This is it. She's gone next year. Yeah. You know, so yeah, she, it's like when you get home, they're like, "Oh, dad's home," but they're they have their own lives now. Yeah, so it's not like when they're younger, you come home and they're like, "Oh, dad's home." Let's all play together. Let's all be around each other. They're like, yeah, yeah. Is, is, is my iPad still work, dad? You got <laughs> hey, still money still coming in? Okay, good. Yeah, mm-hmm. but there's also there is like a you know there is a 
a, a greater depth to why they want me around. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, yeah. there's boy stuff, or there's just life stuff, or they're mm-hmm. trying to figure out, you know, parties and driving and right. p- kids getting high around them. And, you know, like, all that kind of thing is deeper. And I, it's just for my calming presence to be around during these times is more important than when they're oh, young okay. and just want a dad in the house. It's also mm-hmm. different, too, to kind of walk that wire because my son is a freshman in college now. My daughter is... Uh, a sophomore in high school, okay, right? And then I have a three-year-old. Okay. So, but with the older kids, you got to walk this wire between like the three-year-old's I, his daughter, by the way. It's not just the three-year-old he <laughs> that found. he hangs with. Yeah. She's in a storage container. <laughs> I left that part out. It's, I've drilled holes in the side. Yeah, good for you. But it's um, it's kind of a weird wire where you're like, well, how much do I dip in? To this thing, you know, because right. I mean, my older kids don't live with me, and so it's like you know, I don't want to hover, mm-hmm. but I want to be available, and like I'm right. here if you need, you know. Right, I think that's the key, isn't it? Like it's a it's a tough thing to figure out, though. Too. What is your son away at school? Yeah, he's at Michigan State. He's at Michigan State. Yep. So how often do you talk to him? I mean, I, I text them all the time. Right. But I don't call very often because yeah. I'm like, oh, that you know, kids they don't want to be on the phone with dad. So I know. it's like, you know. It's weird. Yeah. How has it been for you? This... It's been weird. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I they live in Michigan with their mom, and so I've made that trip, no matter where I've lived, a lot. Right. So and kind so, of got used to it a little bit. Yeah, I got used to both of them, and now it's just my daughter who's there, because uh-huh. my son's at school, and he's coming back for holidays and things. Right. So it's cool that I see her just by herself, mm-hmm. you know? But it's just, it's odd. It's, you know? Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. Is he doing well? Do you feel co- like they need yeah, confident? Yeah, he's already, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to tell First him. First semester. Yeah. Thanks, no, Bill. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but you, I mean, that's the big thing. You just want to know... That they're okay out there, and, yeah. that, and you, you know, you you can only do so much to prepare them, but you, right? You don't want to get in your own head because I, I always have to go back to, ninety nine percent of kids come out of college alive. Yeah, you know, yeah, so yeah. I don't want to get too freaked out because right. then you, you'll you'll just you know, go it's down a, a bad path. But. It's amazing how these things like schedules of life they're. They're all they, people have mastered the timing of all this stuff pretty well. Like right. by the time they do go to school, you're emotionally ready. They're ready to go out and kick ass in the yep. world. You know what I mean? And like all these little stages of like when they're ready in kindergarten to go get out of the house and go. Even like even like cocktail hour at five, people have figured out all this stuff before us. Yeah, and you know what I mean. Like, yeah. it really is like a natural rhythm that people have kind of dialed in. So where I thought I was there have been be, precedents set. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, where I thought I was going to be like really heartbroken that she's leaving, I can feel myself changing. Yeah, throughout the year, like I'm still going to be sad. That she's not around but all the time. But there is that excitement to see her growing into a very capable human. Yes. And that's, that's and you're like, hey, I helped make that. Yeah. That person knows how to do life, and they're a good person, and I helped. Did Jerry do that joke when you saw him about his daughter going away to school? Yes. She's like yeah. an alligator. Yeah. You get them as a little baby alligator, you and and, and then you can't keep them. <laughs> <laughs> you walk in, it's, just, it's coming out of the tub. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, I, this can't live here anymore. Yeah, yeah. it's got to get out. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's always good to see you, brother. Always. Thank you for coming. I in. always look yeah. forward to seeing you guys. All right, Tom Papa is at Hilarities uh, tonight and tomorrow. <laughs> there are four shows, but tickets for only three of them. So tonight, 7 and 9.30. Uh, 7 o'clock tomorrow is sold out. Still a few tickets remaining for The Late Show tomorrow. Uh, Pickwickandfrolic.com for the info. Tom Papa on Twitter and all that stuff. You want to see all of the myriad things that he is involved in and uh, follow along with that. We'll take a break here. Be right back. It's The Alan Cox Show on 100.7 Double.